If you're still not convinced that Last Epoch isn't like other ARPGs, let me convince you right now by showcasing this beautiful marksman build that I haven't seen anyone else talk about or do uh, anywhere at all, ever. This marksman build is based off of a single passive, and I wanted to make the single passive work as best it could, and that is Ethereal Arrows, where how much mana you spend on a bow attack increases the amount of damage it does by a large, large amount. It's a mana scaling, mana consumption archetype on a rogue class. And you probably know this is only generally ever on mage archetypes or sorcerer archetypes, but here we have it on a, on a marksman, on a bow rogue. It's insane. It is incredible the amount of flexibility the game gives you to make literally anything work. Anything you want to work, works. So here, let's check this out. So on this, on this Echo, uh, on this Empowered Timeline, you can see there the high health enemies take 34% less damage and the enemy modifiers that are gonna be present are also 100% uh, increased health effectively and then 50% more health, giving enemies 300% more health and they take a third less damage. And we'll basically one shot them. Here, check this out. So when we do our little combo, we come here, cast once, everything's dead instantly on the first hit. And you'll notice that even though everything's dead on the first hit, that Hail of Arrows keeps going off. Things die on the initial hit and they don't even get hit by the part of the skill that does the most damage, which is like the 10 seconds that, it la that the skill lasts after the fact. So here, let's, uh, let's look for a boss really quickly. Okay, so here's the boss of the area. These typically have a decent amount of health, as anyone who's played the game knows. And you'll see here, it just, like, the Hail of Arrows is still coming down here. Yeah, so it died in about one third of the Hail of Arrows duration. So now, let's talk about why it's so amazing, and why the Ethereal Arrows passive is, like, so cool. It's just so cool. There's a lot of synergy with this. Immediately after this, we have Mana Warp, which gives bow attacks an increased mana cost. And it also provides a good amount of mana sustain for the build when you use a skill that costs zero mana. That's why we're using Puncture. Now we'll get back to Puncture in a second. But furthermore, we have more mana sustain on Sapping Strikes in the base Rogue Tree. And directly after that, we have the Coated Blades passive, which gives you flat mana consumption to increase the amount of damage you do. Now hold on, we're not done. There are more synergies to be had. In the Hail of Arrows tree specifically, we have the Sky Strike node. This makes the initial barrage of Hail of Arrows a hit, because without this, uh, Hail of Arrows would just be a damage over time skill. But this also makes it increase its mana cost by 25%. That's amazing for us, so we take it. And to scale things up as much as possible, we get the nowhere to hide node, so, so the longer it lasts, the more damage it's gonna be doing. And we make it so that it lasts a long time, but we can only have one active, because that'll be more DPS overall, because it's a very combo heavy build. And then we also get more damage here, and then we also get more damage there. This, unfortunately, makes it cost less mana. However, the node after, bleed chance is nice, but the note after that makes it deal that much more damage based off the amount of bleeds on an enemy. The enemies that you saw in the showcase that were being attacked, they weren't even bleeding for the maximum amount of stacks, which if you get 10 stacks, everything that you saw essentially gets doubled. And here is the creme de la creme. The thing that sends this build over the edge is the Umbral Resolution Dark Quiver passive. So when you consume three shadows, you deal a ton more damage. And when you use a black arrow after picking it up, you consume shadows. And then right before that, you uh, restore mana. And then before that, you get more flat mana consumption. Now you'll notice if we hover over Hail of Arrows, it costs 102 mana, and that's without picking up a Black Quiver arrow. So we use Black Quiver, pick up, pick up a Black Arrow, and we can see it costs roughly 150 mana rather than 102 mana as stated by this. And that's because of the, the increased percentage cost that we have from multiple sources stack on top of all the flat added that we get from Dark Quiver and, uh, and other passives. Now, here is how we generate shadows. You generate shadows on pickup. So there's one shadow. We generate shadow. We generate one shadow from shift right there from this passive down here. 
And so we have two shadows right now, so all we need is one more shadow, and we can get that from Smoke Bomb, or shadows actually last long enough to where you can shift twice, and then use it, and you should be good to go. Or we just use Smoke Bomb to create a shadow every single second with this passive. You don't absolutely need this. It is very helpful though. Smoke Bomb's OP, of course. And so here I'm gonna showcase just how necessary the black arrows are for dealing damage in the build, as opposed to without them. So we'll just use Hail of Arrows straight off. Oh, whoops, <laughs> I missed. Okay, right there. You can see it does like 1300 and then it does like 700 right there again and again. So now let's get it going. And you'll see it goes from 1400 to 50k, <laughs> which is just insane. This guy's super dangerous, by the way. Like, I should probably be paying attention to this, but you know, it's whatever. Because the build is so goddamn strong. And we'll go over the puncher skill and why it's so necessary for the build right after this as well. <laughs> that was a super dangerous position to put myself in. Yeah, you can see there without any bleed stacks on him, uh, I only did 27,000 instead of like 54,000 on the initial hit. One legendary potential. Sag. Okay. Now the reason why Puncher is so good is it gets us those initial stacks of bleed that are so that give us the 27,000 to 52,000 damage boost from the aim for the heart passive on the Hell of Arrows tree. This also gives us frenzy, so a lot of attack speed. It gives us efficacious toxin, which is which makes enemies take 10% increased damage over time. And this is a multiplicative modifier, so it's just 10% more damage over time. And then we also gain more mana from puncture, and then we also do physical resistance shred from puncture, and then we also make other skills have a higher bleed chance, and then we use the rapid strikes passive to make it attack super quickly. And you'll notice here, we have three sacks of it. It attacks that fast, and then without the rapid strikes, it attacks that fast. And this also helps set up a lot of the other buffs that we have within the skill tree, like the covering fire, arrow storm nodes, and things like that. Now, the reason why I wanted to showcase all of this was because of how flexible and how intertwined all the skills are. I think this is a great example of if I didn't use every single skill on my bar, the build would be significantly worse. And I just think that's incredible where, <laughs> where you have five extremely synergistic skills rather than like a bunch of standalone skills that come together to do a bunch of different effects all these build up to one great effect i i just think that's cool any skill in the game any passive in the game that's cool you can just do this you can just go at it and you are going to be successful as long as you try try again as long as you make sure that everything works together i'll see you in the next one